If you guys know me, then you know I love to make doll guides because I'm very research oriented. And I have a video on how I make guides, but since I'm in the middle of working on like an LOL one, I thought I'd kind of explain a bit of my process because there's a lot of different stages. Now, the first thing I do is I find like a website, a blog, someone's personal like Flickr account or something that there seems to be a wealth of information on and I kind of just start copying the information down and grouping it kind of just roughly based on what that other person says and then from there I'll find other websites, I'll look on eBay and Amazon at just like general searches for whatever doll type I'm researching so it'll be like you know on eBay just Disney Descendants and I'll scroll through and I'll start filling in gaps and then I move into the stage of kind of finding box dates for things um, which is difficult that's the most tedious part of doing doll research because I like to actually see the box date myself because sometimes sellers and stuff are wrong. So then I have to go through and do that, reorganize all the information in a way that I think makes sense based on how I'm going to use the info. So like if you look at my Flickr, you can see that I like to divide my dolls by type and then subdivide them by character, but sometimes if it's a really small collection of dolls, say like the Moxie Teens, I don't have them all individually listed out in my like little guide, I just have line photos because that's all I really need. And so then from there I have to like recompile my information and then I start finding pictures online and I kind of crudely organize everything into like online documents and then from there I start finding better pictures, uh, maybe fixing mistakes on info. So it's just a lot of compiling information and this is like my first draft here. You can see there was like a lot of things I scratched out and things I had to move around and information that other people got wrong. I mean, I think it's really important to always question all of your sources because even like even someone like me who's really detail oriented, I make mistakes all the time. So, it's just important to like double check stuff and not just assume that the site you're on is right because I actually found a lot of like not misinformation, but when I was doing this, despite the fact that these dolls are really new and people um, are really thorough because they're collectible and there's rare ones. I noticed that there were times on the blogs and stuff I was using where the people who made them just got sloppy, like they forgot to add in the Wave 2s or they just threw all the Wave 1 and Wave 2 dolls together and they didn't have things like box dates and they didn't list out doll names for the packs, things like that. So all of that takes a lot of time and research and then this is my I guess my next draft where I have things organized by like doll type so I have like the furniture and packs and then I have like the regular lols and pages for just littles and omgs just so it's easier when I start adding them to the computer. I've already started saving pictures but I just haven't put them all on a document yet. So one of my goals for March was to reorganize my doll pets and that's what I'm doing in this clip here. Now I keep like my Bratz pets and like other sorts of pets um, for different kinds of dolls usually with their accessories. So my Bratz pets are with my Bratz accessories. But I have a bunch of Barbie pets or clone pets and uh, Colleen's Katie doll also has a lot of dogs because Kid Core Katie's were sold with dogs for a while and she had a bunch of them. So the drawer they were in was kind of overflowing even though I had a container to kind of separate the dogs from the rest of the animals. So I just had this spare thing of drawers that used to be in my art room, doll room, office area that I emptied when I got my cube system. And you can see I'm separating out dogs from everything else because I just didn't have enough, even cats, to have their own drawer. And there's plenty of room and I'm looking at each pet here because I'm studying them to make sure they don't need to be cleaned because I had noticed um, at some point when I was going in there for I think an episode of As Told by Dollies and We Needed a Pet that there was a few that looked kind of dirty. And I think it was because they were older and things that I had gotten so long ago that maybe they never got properly cleaned. So I have a little pile of um, pets that needed to be cleaned and then I'm taking their now vacated drawer, that big one, and I'm putting all of their larger pet accessories. I do have smaller um, things for like their food and their bowls and like grooming accessories but these are like beds and bridles and baskets for horses so I just 
reused that drawer and now the one that that stuff was in is empty so I tend to shuffle things around that's why I like to accommodate plenty of growing room and then afterwards I brought all of the pets upstairs to clean them I put most of them in this little bin with some dish soap and baking soda so they could sit but I also manually scrubbed each of them with baking soda and dish soap because these were older, like I said, and heavily played with by me and Colleen as kids for the most part. So I felt like they needed the extra deep clean. And there's also some flocked brats pets that were not actually in the drawer with the Barbie pets. But for some reason, my Pretty in Punk and Punk's pets get dusty in storage or something. I'm not really sure why because I've never had an issue with other things in those drawers getting that way, including other flocked pets. But my um, cats, Ian, Nigel, and Sherlock that came with my Punks boys, they always get kind of dusty. So I brought them up to wash with um, OxyClean, like in my How I Clean Flocked Dolls and Accessories tutorial. And after they dried, I put them in like individual little baggies just so I didn't have to keep cleaning them because it's kind of a hassle and I do use these cats a lot and they're also very sentimental because that's my favorite Bratz line. And then here I'm making my um, Bath Beauty Aurora A skirt with some recycled materials. I'll explain more about what I'm using in the next clip. But I decided to do this because I really liked how my ballerina princess skirts turned out for my limbless slot dolls about a year ago. And Colleen suggested that I make one for Aurora and I'm really glad I did because it looks super cute. So as you can see in the previous clip, I made Aurora a skirt because I got her without her factory tutu. And she was wearing this dress. It's Sparkle Princess Aurora's, but it was kind of big and you could see part of her molded top. And when I got my um, ballerina princesses from the Memorial Day Madness haul video, the, Libra, um, the Limbless Lot, I made them skirts and that gave me the idea to make Aurora's. So this lace and these flowers both came from my friend's grandmother who passed away about four years ago. My friend Lisa and her mom gave me all of her uh, grandmother's crafting stuff they thought I could use. And then the tool underneath here is actually um, from a gift. It was wrapped around a Christmas gift and I saved it. So it was all made with recycled materials. And these flowers are the same that I made on her original hairpiece. That it, when I got her, I made this. So I think it looks really cute. So I finally made some backdrops. Now I did end up getting more contact paper at Walmart, but not in the ideal size. But this one here I made with the contact paper I got off Amazon. Now we wanted a winter backdrop for a while, but we just couldn't ever agree on one because a lot of the scrapbook paper pads that have winter themes are dedicated to like Christmas and other holidays and that's not really like a vibe that works with every winter themed at all. So I had some card stock, plain card stock that I got like two years ago and I used mostly that but then I had these footprints in the snow from like a seasonal pack I got at Walmart and I also used these polka dots that um, are left over from one of my old pads before I actually used all the sheets and then I cut out snowflakes with paper and then I painted snowflakes and white dots and I put little like foil star stickers and then I put um, Elmer's glue and glitter down and the nice thing is because this is covered with paper you can't see like the smears of glue which even though it's supposed to dry clear sometimes you can still tell and it photographs really cool. Can I say something about the winter one? Yes. I admit I was being a diva. I was like one of those Hollywood actors who's like I, I can't work <laughs> under these conditions because I uh, really wanted something that said like just winter outside which we just couldn't find. And we looked online on, uh, what website was it? We were, um, we were on Joanne's, I think. Joanne Fabric, yeah. We were on the Joanne website, and we saw some that we both liked, but they were, like, well, the wrong size, or... They were double-sided. They were double-sided, and there were, like, problems with the ones that we both agreed on. So I actually like this better than anything we saw, because it just, it's just simple. It says winter outdoors. 
Yep. Doesn't have to be fancy. And uh, there's another whole other segment of it actually that I had folded in. And I accidentally didn't line them up on both sides, so that's why there's like this extra piece I normally would cut off. And then this is um, one of the calendars that I showed like in my last episode of Dolly Diaries. This is like these are plasticky, so they didn't need covering. They just needed to be taped down. This was last year's calendar. I got it from the dollar store, but it has these really pretty flowers. And you can see um, this is a little bit shorter because of the kind of calendar it was. But then... I actually can't wait to use it. I know, I really like it. We have because, another one uh, this year. I got this really great Tinkerbell uh, pop-out book with like flowered pages that's gonna look amazing with this. Colleen gave me consent to take After apart many years. <laughs> Harry Potter calendars because I took apart my Mary Kate and Ashley one a long time ago for decor when they were on display. And then I decided it would be really cool to make a backdrop because they're about the same size as scrapbook paper. So um, this is one of the ones I used the tall contact paper on that's not ideal, but it came up to about here, so I was able just to put tape across the top. Um, and it was a better brand. It's the same brand as the shorter kind I use, whereas the kind I used before was like a cheap brand and it didn't work, it didn't stick. So these Harry Potter backdrops are proof that one can indeed change the way their mind works after many years. I, had, I did not want to do this until I saw how much use we were getting out of her Mary Kate and Ashley ones, which I didn't expect we'd use a lot. And um, like these, these ones here, she hasn't showed you yet. So these are my first two Harry Potter calendars I ever had. The, uh, this was, I think that's Azkaban. Yep, that's Azkaban. And then that's Goblet of Fire. Those are my first two Harry Potter calendars that dad ever bought me. They've been up in my room, but honestly, I haven't even switched the month they were on in like, I don't even remember when. So it's not like I'm really looking at them anymore. They're just there. So I thought that I'd use them more this way. And you wrote on some of them. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing too. I was like 17 or 18 when I was using one of them and I wrote all over it. And I wrote like stupid stuff that I just didn't want to remember later or have other people see when they're in my room. So this is better because now I'll be able to enjoy them and they're protected by paper, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then this was the pad I showed you that I got at Walmart last time that's like spray paint themed. We've already taken a bunch of pictures with this. Um, this was one of the ones that I used the Amazon contact paper on because, you know, it works out really well. Um, I actually wanted, um, we were going to use the flavors, like, parts of the box to make something like this, but then yeah. we found this pad, and it was so cool, we didn't want to cover it with any of the flavors stuff, because we just love how this looks. I was going to make something kind of like this, with, with spray paint and, like, sponges, but you get a lot of the texture of the cardboard when you paint right on it. What are you eating? Say hi, Mom. Hi, Mommy. Ah, with my girls, I go. Phoebe, what are you eating? Penelope. What are you eating, Phoebe? Are you eating mama's shit? I am more for new fire you. I love you, Phoebe. She I love you, Phoebe. Phoebe left mom for me. <laughs> Didn't she? She did. She ran right over. I was holding Penelope first, and Shelly took her, and, uh, then uh, I brought Phoebe over and Phoebe climbed off my lap and over to her. You took my pigs, ma'am. Penelope doesn't have a preferred preferred person, but Phoebe likes me a lot better. In other news, Isla and Piper spent so much time doing like side-by-side -side napping that I've given them a ship name. They're Pyla. And Clyde. Collide! Oh, I think they're both in the hammock. Because there's a chinchilla tail. And there's, oh, there's a chinchilla face. Hi, Clyde. Clyde was, like, laying sideways a little while ago. And he was moving his whiskers funny while he slept. I think he was having a dream, and then he made this sound. It was, like, really funny. Are you sleeping? Are you on your side? Clyde. Oh, hello. Look at you. Someone wanted to see you. How are you doing? Oh, you're going to lay back down? Are you tired? Is that chinchilla nap hour? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Where's your brother? Where's Napoleon? Is he in Hale's house? Where are you in your house, little man? Napoleon, come out, babes. Come out. Come over here, babes. Come out, baby. 
No. Are you playing hard to get? Oh, would you like a stick? Oh, you want one too. Here, have a stick. Have your stick. No? Would you like the stick? Oh, yes, you love your sticks. You just want a nice treat. No treats for you, you're fat. Yeah, you're a little pudgy, mister. No more treats right now. Yeah, oh, look at that. Aren't you friendly? May I hold your hand? May I hold your hand? Oh, that's romantic. That's romantic. Oh, don't drop your stick. Napoleon. Yeah, you're beautiful. You're a beautiful man. So are you, Clyde. Say hello. Oh, say hello. May I have a kiss? Thank you. That was a very nice kiss. Yes. No, no. It's not coming out. It's not playtime. Nope. Sorry. May I have a kiss from you? Kiss. <laughs> Rejected. Rejected. My goal this month was to make a drawer for my LOL and OMG accessories. I know I don't have a lot of dolls, but because all of them were purchased brand new, they have pretty bulky drink cups and sunglasses, things like that. And I was having them share one of my little organizers with Bratz Babies accessories, but there's just too much stuff now, and I think it would be better to have them in their own drawer. Like, um, one of these where, see how there's like little dividers? So, this drawer here is full of bulky dish type things, coolers, trays, and it's already kind of full, so we're gonna move these to a larger drawer and we're gonna use this for the LOLs. And it also make more sense because the rest of this thing is all like non-dishware. This is all just like random Barbie accessories. We also have things like shopping baskets. Yeah, there's all kinds of them. Lunch boxes. So right now our shopping baskets are in with our purses. Or not shopping baskets, so like picnic baskets. Or in with our purse. So I'm taking them out of the first drawer. There's also things in here like um, covers for trays and cake trays. So there's now more room in our luggage and purse drawer, which before I used to have some of the smaller purses separated out, but it was just getting too out of control. And then this is really great because you know, it's kind of like a similar need. Like usually you're gonna use this in conjunction with food, so. So this is the empty drawer. A lot of times I save like these American Girl outfit boxes are perfect size for organizing. I'm gonna try these out. I will, I don't like hoard everything that could be used as a drawer divider, but I usually keep some stash so that I don't have to like make things when I want to reorganize. So I'll have like a few like mushroom containers and little boxes and things. So I'm gonna leave like a little bit of extra growing room. So like these cups, they're pretty standard and I think they'll be easy to find second hand. Reasonable amount of growing room? Yeah. All right, plenty of growing room because they have bulky accessories. Are you cleaning this now? Should you scrub? Oh, sorry. Okay. Wanna clean your tail? That needs to be cleaned too. Oh, no. Don't bite. 
Is that your cute fur? You can eat your fur? I look at you, Mr. Fluffy. Clean your tail. You look so angry. Yeah? Hey, Boban. Yeah? Did you forget what you were doing? Or don't give yourself a hairball. <laughs> so it's been a while since I showed my little uh, doll to do list of book that I made last year that I still uh, have pages in for this year. So this is the same list as last year. Different things on Flickr like our uh, photo retakes and going through all our fun facts and formatting and things. That's the same. Um, and then this page is pretty much the same. It's transferred over onto a new sheet, but I always keep track of our dolls that there are multiples in the same collection. So like Molly, Samantha, Josephina, Addie, and Bitty Baby, Girl of Today's. So I know who's modeling what outfit. So it's pretty even on Flickr. This was all transferred over. Um, I eliminated all of the ones that were already done last year. So, and I also reorganized them. These are retakes for like thumbnails and Flickr pictures. And then I showed this in my um, How I Keep My Dolly Storage Smelling Fresh video. I'm still filling this out as we go. And then these are all of the goals uh, for this year so far. And I do map out, like you can see I've already planned it out all the way to December. Just so that it's easier, I don't have to like redo the whole format each month. So I did this a little bit differently than last year. Last year I had like Flickr, Maintenance, YouTube, and Extras, and then a thing for like all the videos I uploaded. This time I'm just kind of adding in the extras in the category that they make sense in. So for Flickr, uh, say that I finished going through my earrings album, but that wasn't originally on the list. I'll just like add it, if that makes sense. Just so that I had more space in each column because I found that I was oftentimes running out of room. And uh, this is like where we are in April. And then these are all of the other months. And uh, these are our line photos. So if you follow me on Flickr, you'll see a lot of like collection and line photos that are old but that are like uh, being moved to the front of the photo stream. That's because we've been rewriting uh, the like personal fun fact thing on them and also reshooting the pictures with backgrounds. So one that got water damaged, uh, this is what we were doing yesterday and we've done it also already this month. We're going through all the clothing drawers, which we used to do this a lot in Dolly Diaries, where we check all the bags, check all the labels, make sure they're appropriately sized, see if things need to be mended. Uh, we're doing it again because I forget where we last left off and as we've been going through <laughs> the things and using them, we found things that needed to be mended or bags that weren't appropriately sized. So we did that yesterday and this is all kind of what we left out so if we want to work on it more today. I always have like other notebooks and things I use a lot. I know, my madness. This is where we keep like our doll inventory, which you guys have seen before. Colleen had another notebook for a really long time that she would jot down ideas in for like things she wanted to use for photos. So this is the uh, new notebook. I actually bought it a long time ago for something else and I also keep labels pre-cut label things and you can see like this was um some of our ideas for one of our told by dolly skits different videos we might work on those are like ideas basically now, this notebook is like something Colin just had in her desk for a million years i uh keep track of like my ever after high parts i've bought harder to tell apart like a three pair of hands from someone else so like these are the outfits for american girl um that i don't have that we want to buy in the future. This folder is where I keep loose pieces of paper. Plans for like this was my hair types video chart. And then this is like doll research I was working on for LOLs and Disney store dolls. And then this is obviously this one I don't have things in it because I just rip out the pages and I'll be a Raphael cowboy. Raphael cowboy. Raphael cowboy. <gasps> what? Who buys a coke? No! Coke. Coke is bad. Coke is evil. Bad Coke. It is disrespectful to buy Coke. Shelly, Coke is rival. How dare you buy the Coke? This is big problem. Big problem. No, no, no. See? See? Let me educate you. Okay? This is very, very good. Very, very good. This is bad. Very, very bad. Bad, bad, bad. Very, very good. 
<laughs> very, very bad. Okay? So, this has health benefits and this is poison. Okay? Yeah. Are you happy that you got to do that? I haven't wanted to do that for a couple of days. Since I couldn't get Dr. Pepper at this floor <laughs> and I had a bike club. <laughs> it is very, very good, Pepsi. Yeah. With everything going on right now in the world, I feel like I keep getting a lot of questions and messages from people. For the most part, um, the stuff you're seeing in this episode was filmed like at the end of February, beginning of March. So before this all kind of came out, um, there were like a few uh, clips obviously that were more recent. Colleen and I are <coughs> okay. And if we weren't okay, if we were sick, if something bad had happened, we would let you guys know. And we're okay. As long as like we're uploading regularly and I'm in the comments and getting back to your emails uh, at a fairly decent time, we're okay. <laughs> but I think we veered away from putting too much emphasis on the pandemic because I don't know about you guys, but every time I go to YouTube's homepage, it's pretty much all I see. And I want, like, we both kind of want the stuff we upload here to be more like about escapism and to uplift people. And with everything going on right now, there's so much uncertainty, there's so much false information, there's so much, un like, just unknown about what the future is going to be, what's going to And I feel like on. it's almost over talked about on the internet. I mean, general. not even just on the internet, anytime you're on the phone with somebody, oh my god, or you're emailing somebody, you can't escape it, and I just don't feel like it's healthy. Take this from someone who probably has OCD. Like, when I say I have OCD, I don't mean like it's cute, like I clean a lot and I organize a lot. Like, yes, that's one of the ways <laughs> it manifests, but Colleen can attest to this. Like, I overthink things. Like, play over and over and over in my head. And so when I'm worried about stuff, that's what I tend to do. And I know from being depressed two years ago from doing that with things that were going on in our lives, I would take an issue that I didn't even have a lot of control over and I would think about it so much and like ruminate on it to the point where I'd be crying about it every day and like that's not helpful to anybody so I think it's like you can you can acknowledge that a situation is serious without putting all of your energy into it and because we're not in a position of like special knowledge on this and we're not an authority of any kind I don't want to be like telling other people what they should or shouldn't be doing people feel good and I know that when I've been uploading a lot lately people have said like oh it made their day better it's been a distraction and like that's what we want to make when we're not talking about it it's not that we don't care or that like it doesn't exist in our world like everybody is affected by this right and like obviously you're not happy about what's going on right. I would rather be filming things like as told by dollies that we just don't have time for on a regular basis. And I think that that's one of the best things you can do if you're struggling with this, like if you're not used to being at home or if you're worried and anxious, cause like, I know what that's like. I think you just have to find something that like can distract you. I think that's really important cause like your mental health is just as important as your physical health. And when all of this started, my main concern how is this going to impact like the people who are already depressed or already anxious or already agoraphobic like how is this going to affect them because I've been there and like I've been able to kind of be zen about it because I've been working really hard the past like year on my mental health so I've been trying not to let other people freak me out and like get me to a place where I'm like having a panic attack about it every day or like where I'm crying every day about it because and that's not helping anybody. Similarly, I'm actually a very bad hypochondriac. And um, a recovered germaphobe. The, uh, the lion in our skit on the personalities, that's me. Um, I'm actually a wicked bad hypochondriac and uh, how I have not lost my mind over this. I so we're trying to stay calm and we're trying not to obsess over it, so. Yeah, because I, I obsess in things and I also already like clean stuff too much. That's how I deal with anxiety, and Colleen is already like a uh, hypochondriac and thinks she's going to die regularly and also a germaphobe. So it's sort of like when you already deal with those issues, you don't want to um, feed into them more. And in regards to like how much time we have, Colleen is not working either of her jobs right now. Though. Which has been really hard for me because um, I love my primary job. It's like one of my favorite things. It's like almost like a yeah, hobby. She's like an um, aide for disabled. Yeah, and it's my favorite thing and I absolutely love it. I miss my kids so much. I haven't been sleeping that well because of it because, you know, that was like what I had trouble sleeping since my mom got sick back when I was like 14. And what broke me of that was actually working at the high school. So this has kind of like turned me back into an insomniac. It's been really hard for me to fall asleep. 
Although so, Pepsi doesn't help either. I'm sure that the caffeine from Dr. Dracula's Miracle Beverage <laughs> isn't helping my sleep. He's a scam artist. <laughs> it's good to escape and I want to use this time to focus on content that in the long run will continue to be meaningful for me because it's stuff I already have planned. Yeah, and I'm still working. I work on a farm, but uh, some people were worried about that. I don't interact with other people. like. I'm the only like person hired to work on the farm, and so the only people I come into contact with are Evan and Ellie, and I already like I clean their house and stuff, so it's not really like I'm exposed to, and they're not going out, they're older. I'm not driving calling back and forth. I usually spend like two and a half hours every day just bringing her back and forth between jobs. You know, there's just other things that like you can do normally, like we would normally be going to the flea market, so we just, we're home a lot, but like I don't mind, like we're not bored. I think that we were built for like, <laughs> <laughs> staying in our own little imaginary world. So, we were built to be hermits. I thought like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a hermit. I'm not always like wanting to be home because I'm anxious. Like, I just like being at home and I know how to keep myself And I'm a homebody too, by nature. Like, I'm, a, I'm like a creature of habit. Like, you know, I like going to places I'm used to. Yeah, I mean, we do, obviously we wish we could go to the flea market. You know, we miss our little things like when I get gas, getting a soda. I'm the Salvation Army once in a while or being able to recycle. <laughs> I'm so upset about that. I mean, that was like the first time I got really upset over everything. It's like when I lost it for calling. It was uh, not being able to go to work. Yeah, not being able to go to work. That's when she had her little meltdown. And for me, it was like the day we went to the town dump, and I had my recycling, and I realized it was all closed off because they're trying to keep people apart from each other. And I was like swearing and like losing my mind because I was really upset. <laughs> so our priorities. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it went. Uh, we could use our reason little bags at Walmart. Yeah, the reusable bags. That was her other meltdown. My second meltdown was uh, when I realized I couldn't get soda at the gas station anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. Like, we're both happy. We've been through, like, I think on a personal level worse. Um, like, we've been worse off and financially we've been worse off like when our parents were sick. I think when it affects you on such a personal level. And we've been okay. Like, I think you just need to distract yourself. And also the pets are all doing great. They've been we have not been social distancing with them. <laughs> so yeah, they've um, they've been doing great and it's been really nice uh, getting to spend more time with them. Lots of picky cats. Yeah, I'm usually that parent, the pet parent that goes to work all day. So it's nice getting to spend more time getting to know them. Stay tuned for more videos to come. I am trying to film quite a bit when it's sunny out. It's just a really crappy time of year right now with all the rain and clouds. We're gonna be doing some of the same, some different stuff. Obviously, if you watched our last haul video, um, we're not gonna be like buying stuff really because it's, we like to buy secondhand. I mean, you know, once in a while, we might need to buy things online. We're trying to be responsible. I do have something very exciting coming in the mail soon. Yeah. When things go back to normal, you can expect more hauls and transformations, but we uh, we honestly don't have a lot in the way of collection videos to share. I'm not gonna update things that like don't have a need to be updated. Um, like our Barbie collection videos and Bratz collection videos. I mean, even when they're subdivided by character, like my Chloe's, if I only got like five Chloe since making them and they're going to be split up between two videos, you're going to be seeing mostly the same old dolls and I just, I don't want the content to get redundant because um, I've had a lot of people asking like if I'll remake things or like the house tour. Um, our house looks pretty much the same, like we're not rich people who can like <laughs> I know the house every year. Um, I mean other than the chins being in the living room and uh, getting a replacement used back door. That's really the only <laughs> difference and I don't want it to be redundant. So we have other things we can film. So I hope you guys understand. Uh, yeah, and also big misconception. I don't have a lot of luck finding brats usually. My collection got big because I caught a lot of sales and because I bought a few people's entire collections. So all of that kind of created what I have. But in terms of finding ones that I don't already own, like I don't have a lot of luck. So because I've had quite a few requests to update those. I've only gotten like 10 brats since making my 2018 one, if that. Yeah, we just haven't had good luck. Yeah, and especially now with no secondhand shopping. But yeah, I thought I'd talk about those things because I've, I have been getting a lot of requests for certain sorts of videos like that. We're open to filming uh, certain collection videos over again when we feel it's appropriate, but not like if it's gonna be the same because we don't want to bore you guys. We have other content we can do. So until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.